Hi, it's Will from StoneTheCastle.com, and here in YouTube, know me as Epic Fantasy. That's right. And this is my latest tutorial. This is day five of Halloween week. That's right. We're doing a new video every single day right up until Halloween. That's eight in a row, eight days in a row. So if you're a subscriber, you get a nice treat. Um, nice pun there. A nice treat all week long. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that button if you want to get all these videos every day right up until Halloween. This is day five. And in this tutorial, we do, this is kind of like two tutorials in one. We do a special project. It's around here somewhere. Um, <laughs> that's right. We do a medieval axe to the back. See ya? Now this is kind of two tutorials in one because I show you how to make the axe. And I also show you how to attach it to your back. You need a t-shirt and an old shirt. And you can attach this and put some blood on it. It looks, looks really good. And you do not have to use the axe that I, we make. If you can get an axe in the dollar store or something like that, some kind of a weapon, you know, that you want to attach to your back, I show you how to do that. So, um, you know, it's a fun project. You get enough time until Halloween to do it. And so, and, and that's what this is all about. And let me talk about tomorrow, day six. Tomorrow, what's coming up is a couple of um, attachments to the head here. See that? A meat cleaver to the head and also a chef's knife to the head. This one's hilarious. See where that's stuck right in? like that. So that's tomorrow, so stay tuned for that one. Um, thank you very much if you're a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button. Uh, leave me a, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, give me a project suggestion. I read all comments. I very much appreciate it. So let's do, um, let's launch into the introduction, and then let's do how to make a medieval axe to the back. Thank you. Dioramas, origami, catapults, and trebuchets, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real blacksmithing, model boxes, animation. I teach you how to feel creation. StormTheCastle.com. Let's make something. All right, here's a look at the parts and materials we're going to need for this. And uh, I don't have the complete... I'm not going to give you the complete list here. Go to the URL in the description of this video to get a complete list. But some of the most important things are a hot glue gun, foam board, cereal box cardboard, and regular corrugated cardboard. So um, print up the template. There you go, you got a bunch of different pieces here. And we're going to start by working on those large sheets, which are the handle. That makes the hexagonal shaped handle. So cut the edge on both of those. There's a scissor mark that shows you on the template where to cut those. So they butt up against each other like this. And then tape them onto foam board like that. That just makes one large piece. That's the handle of the axe. And then cut it out all the way around the outside edge of it. See, now we're going to, um, in order to fold this up into a hex, there's a solid line and a dotted line. And the first thing you do is those six solid lines as you cut through them. Now, only cut through the top layer of paper and some of the foam, or most of the foam if you can, without cutting through the bottom layer of paper. That way it's not cut into pieces, it's just split open so we can fold it. And I'll show you that in a second. But that's on the solid lines only. See? See, now it can be snapped and folded. Just like that, that's beautiful, it's like hinging. So you do that for all six of those and then this is what you end up with, see? But it's still not quite right because it won't fold totally correctly and be solid. So what you do is, on the dotted lines, is you cut with, at a 45 degree angle approximately like this. On all six of those dotted lines. See so yeah, how it has an angle? It's a beautiful angle like that. Now you do all six of those. And you can fold the foam board over like this. It makes it easy to cut each dotted line at an angle. So you fold it again and you cut at an angle. And once you get all, all of those cut, now it forms a beautiful hexagonal shape like that. as a nice strength to your, um, to your axe. So put glue in all of those grooves and on the outside edge. And then glue it together. Right, and then use something to hold it all together, like rubber bands or pieces of string or rope or something like that. I'm trying to avoid using tape because it, it'll take, removing the tape might damage the foam board. But that's the handle of the axe and it looks good. So now let's work on all the other pieces that are remaining. 
cut those out, not exactly, just kind of cut them out so they're smaller, and then apply those to cereal box cardboard. Now see this here, examine the, the cardboard. If you have any wrinkles or cracks or bend marks like this, try to avoid those. Don't, don't use those because it'll weaken the axe. Once you get all those pieces applied to the um, cardboard, cut them all out. Now there are several pieces with dotted lines. Um, score those dotted lines with a sharp um, knife, exacto knife if you have one. Just score them, don't cut it all the way through because th those points get folded. Those are fold lines. We want a nice crisp fold because uh, the axis, these parts are actually supposed to be metal so you want nice sharp crisp folds. See it like that? So score all of them. Even this curved one. So now let's glue together the two um, points on the axe. See, and because you folded it over like that at a little bit of an angle, it becomes it makes turns it into a three-dimensional shape. See how that's open there? That's the back hook on the axe, and the other one there on the table, that's the um, top pick of the axe, the thrusting pick. So let's go back to the handle for a second here. We'll finish off making the handle by um, gluing the, um, the hex shapes one to each end, just like that. And then paint it. We want to paint it before we apply the metal pieces. So paint it with a very generous um, amount of um, brown paint can even add some Mod Podge to it or something to make it um, very, very um, thick. And I use the back of the paintbrush to uh, put a wood grain pattern in it that looks really nice. I'll show you a quick snippet here of how good that looks. See that? Looks like wood. So now let's put all the various metal pieces on. Let's start with the band at the very top. Glue that on and pay attention to this tab here, it's important. And once you've got that in place, then put more glue on the tab and it's, you've got it in a good position, put glue on that tab and then glue those two tab halves together. So now let's put the various parts on. Start with the back spike, the picking spike, that's for um, actually um, reaching and pulling your opponent. Tap that down exactly opposite the tab. That goes exa exactly opposite the tab. Put the metal banding along the side and notice that one of them has a, a little bit of a design that goes furthest away from the head of the axe. Now let's put the actual axe blade on. One goes there and the other one goes right against it on the other side. Then let's put the point on and that's it. Well, a couple more little smaller details. Now after you put all these pieces on or after you put each piece on, Go over it again with the hot glue gun and really get it strong. Put plenty of extra glue on there. You don't want this falling apart on you. Like this. Now go over it again and put more glue on it. Put more glue on the axe, on the picking, on the pulling half. Make sure it's all nice and strong. So let's paint it. All the metal parts are black. Which are all the cereal box cardboard parts. Now let's add some rivets and um, use hot glue for that and notice the swirling motion. You swirl like this, 
spin it around and then pull it up and that's how you get a nice bead on there do it all the way down the length of the axe about every inch and a half something like that and then paint them silver once they dry paint them silver one more thing remaining in the axe itself is done if you can if you have something to seal it seal it with a high gloss sealer something with a really good shine on it this Mod Podge is great for that it'll make it look like metal and this axe came out really good it looks terrific it is a medieval axe so there you go. If that's what you want for Halloween, that's what you got. But if you want to put it, stick it in somebody's back, you want to wear it as a costume on your back, this is what you do. Cut off the top quadrant like that, a top section of it like that, and check it. Measure it first and check it how you want it. You want it to go into your back at an angle. It's not flat. So in other words, it won't be um, perpendicular to the ground. You want it to be at an angle as if somebody actually swung it at you. So cut off that top section the way we've done it there. Now, use corrugated cardboard for this because it's stronger. Cut yourself a big square and a second square a little bit smaller and glue them together. And notice how the corrugations go in opposite directions. See it? That will give you maximum strength. So get yourself somebody to put that t-shirt on and then hold it up against the, t the back of the t-shirt where you want it and mark it off. Now don't keep it on the person when you're putting hot glue on it. We don't want them to get hurt. So take it off, put a, sh put a piece of cardboard inside of it to protect it and then glue your cardboard assembly down like this and do it in steps. Because you're working with fabric here, you can't just glue the two pieces together. What you want to do is glue it, let it dry, glue another section, press it down, let it dry, pick it up, and I'll show you one more iteration of that, I believe. Pick it up, lift it up, get some more glue in there, press it down, and do that until the whole thing is done, all the way down to the very bottom. You want this to be nice and strong, so it lasts for all of Halloween night. Now put it on and measure, put the axe up against it and measure it and cut the outer shirt where you want that axe to be located, right in the spine. So you had a good location. Not too high, not too low. Measure it. You know, this axe came out so good, it was almost a shame that we cut it into somebody's back. So, take, so apply glue to the corrugated cardboard and glue that on. And then put even more hot glue on it. Make sure this is really strong. This could be a, uh, this is a potential weak spot. You want plenty of glue on that thing. You don't want it to come off because you're walking around. It's going to be shaking. You want it to be nice and strong. Just don't be bashful. Look at that. Try it on. Now a few more things. We're almost done here. You're almost ready. Everything's good. Everything's looking good. That's we're going to finish it off. Yep, I like it. The angle really makes this and the, the bottom end of the axe head sticking out like that, that curve like that, really looks terrific. It makes a big difference. See it? It's just gives you the impression that, that that axe is stuck in your back. So now put some hot glue on there and then move the outer shirt to it so it covers everything so you don't see any of the, of the cardboard underneath like that, see? You're hiding the cardboard. Do that on both sides. And then apply a big bead of hot glue right along the edge of that where the shirt meets the axe because that's blood and then paint it red. That's blood and flesh. And spread it out to the shirt too because you're bleeding all over the place. That's it. Uh, 
I liked it a lot. We had a lot of fun with this. Got another project, got lots more Halloween projects. Um, thanks for watching. Um, if you make this project, make sure you send me a picture of it. I'd love to see it. Put it on the website. Um, here's some um, suggestions as to more videos, more tutorials that you might like. Uh, thanks for watching. Hit that like button. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Thank you.